In this video, we're going to go through some examples of direct and inverse proportion. Um, really trying to find that constant of proportionality and then finding another value therein. So for number one, we've got y is directly proportional to x, which means we can write down that y is equal to kx. If y is equal to 20 when x equals 4, OK, well, that next line allows us to find a little bit more out about this. We should be able to find k now. So 20 must be equal to, well, 4k. So k must be 5. So if y is equal to 5x, that should allow us then to find or calculate the value of x when y is 55. So when y is 55, we've got 5x, and so x must be 11. OK? And that's how we can solve a problem like that for, in, for direct proportion. Another example here, a is directly proportional to r squared. So a is equal to k r squared. If a is 12 when r is 2, so 12 is equal to 2 squared, so 4k. So k must be 3 in this case. So we have that a is equal to 3r squared. Calculate the value of a when r is equal to 5. So a is equal to 3 lots of 25, 5 squared. So that's 75. OK, so A is 75 in that case. Now, the next two examples are inverse proportion. So X is inversely proportional to Y squared. So that means that X is equal to K over Y squared. Notice the change in uh, setting up the problem here. If X is 4 when Y is 3, so X is 4 y is 3, so 3 squared is 9. So k must be equal to 4 nines, so 36. So x is equal to 36 over y squared. Calculate the value of y when x is equal to 2.25. So 2.25 must be equal to 36 y squared. So if I multiply both sides by the y squared, and then divide both sides by the 2.25. OK. Now, 36 over 2.25 is 16. OK. So y would be plus or minus 4. Now, you've got to be um, a little careful when dealing with indirect and uh, sorry, direct and inverse proportion. Um, really, when you're thinking about the context of the problem, can y be negative 4? In the majority of cases when we're working with direct and inverse proportion, we are working in a contextualized situation, a real life situation. So whatever y represents, if y was a length, for example, y would not be able to be minus 4. It would only be positive 4. So keep in mind, can the variables that we're working with be negative when we're looking at our answers? OK, and lastly, Q is inversely proportional to root T. So Q is equal to K over root T. If Q is equal to 12 when T is 100, so 12 is equal to k over, well, the square root of 100 is 10. So that must mean that k is 120. So q is equal to 120 over root t. Calculate the value of t when q is equal to 3. So 3 is equal to 120 over root t. So multiply both sides by the root t. Divide both sides by 3, and then you can square both sides. OK, 
Okay, so T would have to be 1,600. 1, 